All right. I did a previous video on this E2 uh, S6. It was kind of my first impressions, and so I've done a proper, well, I've done maybe like three or four shoots with it, but I did like one proper pretty intense gig, and that was out in Joshua Tree. Uh, I got to really push this camera to limits. I took it camping too, and I might have gotten drunk, and I might have just kept this in the back of the Jeep, and it might have rolled around all over the place, and it's uh, holding up just fine, zero issues. Let's just get straight into it. This is gonna be a little bit more of a intensive review, intensive for me at least, because I'm usually really lazy about this stuff. Let's just start off with what I dig about it. Right off the bat, there's no gimmicks. It just works. The build quality on it, super robust. Uh, I have no worries going into the field with this. It's a metal frame. Again, like I just said, it was the back of my Jeep rolling around. There's dust all over it. I've had this out near water and splashes all over it and all that kind of stuff. I'm pushing it pretty hard to what most people probably would be uncomfortable doing, but that's how uh, I like to film. I like to get in there. I like to be on a wide angle lens and really get into the action of everything. I haven't seen any signs of wear or any issues or anything like that. When I had the Black Magic Pocket Cine Camera 4K, there was times that it just wouldn't turn on or I had to blow the dust through those fans and that camera was just really stressful. There's all the ports on there. It was, if the camera on the side, it was kind of dangerous and a lot of issues with, with that compared to what I'm rocking with now. This thing's basically built like a tank. So from there, let's talk about CFast. You can run SSDs on here. The whole team over at Zcam do not recommend the Samsung T5s. I have several of these, sadly. Originally, I thought I would just use these because like I have so many of them, so I might as well. Well, they don't recommend it. They say if you bump it, you drop frames and stuff. So I went out and I got, oh wait, I can't show the brand that's on it right now. I can show this side. So I went out and I got this SanDisk. This is like their bigger, I forgot what's called. You can see how dirty my stuff is. I use my stuff. There was extra cables on there and they were stressing me out saying that they don't recommend to run SSD cell. I bought some CFast. These CFast cards are pretty damn affordable for what they are. I actually just ordered a second one of these as backup. Just went with this and I'm really freaking happy that I invested into these because it makes it way easier just, just like not have other cables running around on here. Uh, it just makes life easier. So I kind of wish I went with that beforehand with even the black magic, but I mean, now I have it, so I'll be set now. It just said minimal cables. You can see the cables I have on here, that's all. It's just for the mon for the HDMI to the monitor and the camera control cable. Uh, other than that, there's no other cables that are needed. You can run V-mount batteries. Um, you can run those on there if you want. I like as minimalistic as I can on my rig, so I would not be running V-mount on here. This battery, uh, actually run, I'm using on this monitor that I'm using for the Sony, but there's this one main battery that I use and it shows, it, there's like battery meter on the back of the battery, so it kind of shows you what exactly your your battery level is. I've gone through a full day with like 10% left on the battery. I would usually change out before that, but I was just pushing it to see how far I could really push it, you know. Uh, with that, you have full HDMI ports on here. No silly micro or mini HDMI ports. I broke my, my micro HDMI port on my Fujifilm X-T3, so after that, I will never, ever, ever touch micro HDMI again. They're just too fragile. You bump them, you lose connections, you start getting issues, you go through those cables like crazy. So like for instance, the new Canon R5 just came out and it's like a, it's either mini or micro HDMI. And I don't know why they would do that. I mean, it's a DSLR. If you want proper HDMI cable, you need to get a cinema camera. And again, that's what instead of cameras come in because they hold up better. They're a little more robust. You get full cables on them. You get internal EDs, we'll get to that. There's just, that. it's just, there's a big difference between a cine camera and, and uh, these DSLRs are coming out. Yeah, the quality might be similar, but the form function is what you're paying for at the end of the day. Uh, so with that, there's also, uh, I have all mine cover up, but there's uh, XLR ports on here. So you can run condenser mics and run phantom power through it and all that. So I don't really mess with that too much. I like doing uh, sound in post. Uh, so I don't really like use the sound here. Sometimes I'll just turn sound off actually. There, I know a lot of people that are, that actually use that. So there is an eternal END. You have to buy that separately and it's $400. I ordered it back in like April or May or something like that. And two months later, it still wasn't there. 
The CEO and the Facebook group said that some were shipping out. None of us got them. So I just canceled my order because I'm impatient. I don't want to wait for things. I don't want $400 just sitting on my bank as I'm waiting for this thing that may never come until the end of the year. So I just canceled that and I ordered a second uh, variable ND filter by Freewell. They're only hundred bucks. They're better than the Peter McKinnon uh, variable NDs. I've have previous videos on my YouTube if you want to look for those. But so I'm just rocking variable NDs for now. If they ever get their stuff together with uh, getting these pumped out, then maybe I'll, I'll go to purchase one. And I understand Corona's going on, so things might be slow for them. And yeah, it's just, yeah. So with that, you can see that this looks like a proper cinema camera. Also, I usually have a, a, a FP battery in here too, but it looks like a proper cinema camera. So if you're getting hired to do video and you show up the DSLR, some, Clients might be like, ooh, uh, how's this video gonna turn out? And when they see it, it's just, it's just, that's how the human mind is. It's dressed to impress. I know people are against that. That's just the reality of life. That's the reality of especially this industry. This is a very visual industry. So that goes a, a really far away with pulling up with proper gear. The sensor readout, so it's a 6K sensor um, and it's more of like a square sensor. So when you're doing like cinema 6K and all that, it crops the top and the bottom. But the cool thing about that is they have mounts that you can buy that are only $100. There's there's a Micro Four Thirds mount and I think someone's working on a Sony E mount. I think there's a PL mount too. For a hundred bucks, you can put a Micro Four Thirds mount on here and put all the, like those Micro Four Thirds anamorphic lenses that are coming out. will cover, well, most of them will cover the full sensor on here shooting 6K open gate. So you're getting a 6K anamorphic readout on a Super 35 sensor, which is insane. That's one thing I actually might dive into. I might get the Vazen lenses, Vazen, Vazen, whatever it's called, for like music video type gigs, because they're a little more creative. But for running gun gigs, I love Canon EF lenses. I have Tokina 11 to 16 millimeter. There's dog hair over everything, dog hair on my life. This is the Sigma uh, 18 to 35. 18 to 35, and then I have the Canon 70 to 300. With those mounts, uh, there's a lot of options that you could do on a Super 35 sensor. Kodaks, there's a lot of options for Kodaks. It shoots ProRes internally. It can shoot ProRes RAW to the uh, Atomos Ninja recorder. It has uh, something called Z-RAW, which is their own RAW format, which I'm really excited to dive into that more, but currently DaVinci does not give support to Z-RAW. DaVinci doesn't have support for ProRes RAW either, so. Both of the fo those formats won't work for me. I won't touch Premiere ever again. I won't touch Final Cut ever again. DaVinci is like the way to go, especially if you have a specific look that you're trying to create and all that. DaVinci just helps you color grade a lot easier. And the editing, everything just flows. There's no issues with it. There's no lag or anything like that. It just, the program just works. So I won't be switching from that ever. Again, it shoots H.265, uh, ProRes, Proxy, LT422, and HQ. I've been running tests between the, the H.265 and the ProRes 422. It gives you a lot more space, the H.265 does. And it opens up a little bit more features when you're recording and wanting to use the monitoring uh, assist tool. So we'll get into that a little bit later. All the Kodaks are beautiful. They're all high data rates. And there's a lot of options that you can switch between two. And there's a lot of different frame rates and variable frame rates that you can switch between two. But there's some issues with that too that we'll get into here in a little bit. It does shoot 120 in HD. It shoots up to 75 frames per second in 4K, I believe. Uh, it does crop in and then super sampled. I think you go up to 60 frames per second, but it crops in a tiny bit. But I usually shoot 48 frames per second. I just like the, the way that looks on a 24p uh, timeline. So I just stick to 48 frames per second and everything works fine on there. Uh, the colors on it, the colors are gorgeous. I ran tests previously between the Z Cam and the Black Magic. The Black Magic always had this kind of like reddish brown look to it. And that's because there's no IR filter. So I used to use IR filters on it, but it was just another piece of glass on there. So I just ditched it and I would just kind of try to tune it out in the blacks. And I also had the Nissi IR NDs that I would use my matte box and those helped a lot too. But that, that look was always there. With this, they have uh, an IR filter inside of the, or IR look painted layer. I don't know how it works. The, the colors look very true. I hate to say it, but the whole RE like thing, everyone's chasing RE likes, but I'm pretty sure that their Z log tool automatically puts a, a color log thing on it and I'm pretty sure it's supposed to mimic Ari and it looks really gorgeous. So the colors I actually like more than the Black Magics with the 6K sensor, 
it has a, a specific kind of pop to it that I really like. It looks, I don't want to say it looks high end, but it definitely looks like quality, if that makes sense. Uh, the contrast on it is beautiful too. Uh, with the dynamic range, there's 14 stops of dynamic range. Heard a little rumor that the Blackmagic 4K was actually only like 11.9 stops of dynamic range. So I'm pretty sure this thing is like a 14, like true 14 stop dynamic range. Uh, and the cool thing is no matter what ISO you're at, so on the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, as you change ISOs, your dynamic range would shift either more into the highlights or more into the shadows, and you had to like kind of compensate for that. On the Z-Cam E2S6, when you're changing ISOs, that dynamic range stays the same. So there's seven stops uh, above and there's seven stops below. I did hear that you do get some color shift when you're changing ISO. That's not really a big issue to me. You can easily change that in post. So. That's not, I don't know. If you need color accuracy for some reason, then it would be important to you. I don't know too many people that actually need like their their reds to look exactly the same exact red in real life and all that. Even when you're doing campaign videos for commercial brands, they don't, they're not really expecting you to get exact colors on there. It's not like doing photography for campaigns. So yeah, you can kind of push the exposure all over. You can either expose it as zero or you can overexpose it by like two or three stops and you'll still be able to pull it back. So I actually made a custom LUT to where you can properly overexpose and the reference LUT on here will look uh, accurate. It will look like how it look like it's at zero, if that makes sense. But I would not meter off of it. I meter off the log. Uh, source so with that i keep bringing up the facebook group the facebook group is amazing it's like going straight to uh customer service but not having to go through their website and all that you just go in the facebook group ask a question someone in there will either know or someone for the zcam uh, team will know and actually the ceo kinson i think that's how you say his name will, will reply to posts and stuff sometimes so if you're having any issues you go straight there and literally within an hour you usually have an answer for it yes i love this camera i'm praising it it just gets the job done there's no tricky to it there's no like gimmicks to it there's no like you can't do this you can't do that it's just a proper camera and it just works and it's only 2400 dollars. that's all it paid for it so for me big bang for my buck i've already like quadrupled the money that i paid for this it's a no-brainer good investment you could compare that to r5 the overheating possible overheating issues uh, none of us really have production models to really test that out i'm talking my hands a lot again those get good quality images so do the sony so do the fujis i actually really love the fuji xt force quality on, on video but again you're going the reason you want to go to a cinema camera is for the eternal nd internal prores full hdmi port battery life the setup rate changing out mounts the actual build quality on it all for video so all the buttons make sense all those buttons are exactly for video it's not a hybrid camera where you have to switch things and you have to switch in menus to switch over to video and having to fidget and change settings as you're switching back and forth it's just a video camera anyways let's talk about what sucks about this camera now there's not a whole lot but let's get into it there's some things i'm a little bit frustrated about i'm not frustrated enough to the point where i'm going to get rid of the camera this has been the most easiest camera for me to adapt to and for me to use so uh yeah again let's talk about what sucks about it now so like i was just saying since they are a smaller company you can get to them really easily you can get to the ceo and the team members there and you can figure stuff out easily you know there's not a bunch of corporate there's not huge wait times you have to do with that there's also downsides to that there's only so much horsepower that they have behind their team so if there is an issue i'm sure they're on it immediately but it's not a huge corporate thing where there's a million guys working on one thing so sometimes maybe issues take a while to get fixed uh, but at the same time maybe it's they're small enough to where they're like oh yeah let's test out this feature or let's do this let's help out this person so there's give and takes to them being a smaller company uh what really frustrates me is again things like the END. How I just said, I ordered it and there's two months later and they said that they were gonna, were gonna get them and no one got them and I just canceled my order. So I understand that Corona is going on right now and things might be slowing down, things aren't at 100% right now, but it's just kind of frustrating that we can't get certain things uh, as quick as we would if we were with a bigger brand. Uh, the menu systems, the menu system aren't bad. They're pretty simple, but I think they can be streamlined a little bit better. Things that uh, would make sense if they were in the same section, but they're all split up, which I mean, they both make sense, but I don't know, but the way my mind works, I think, again, it would just make more sense if they were laid out a little bit differently. And the reason I'm saying that is because like sometimes they'll change uh, a resolution and then all of a sudden your variable frame rate gets changed or the proxies can run only a certain way or there's only specific formats that a certain variable frame rate can work in and not in that resolution. It's just, it's really mixed up to where 
obviously if they had a bigger screen they could lay it out and they would gray out things and so you can see oh if i do this i can't use all these options on here you have to dance in between the menus you have to go back and forth and xing out things going to other sections just kind of a hassle so again it's not horrible but it is kind of tedious sometimes depending on what you're doing again i understand small team they can only do so much and that was a worry when i first bought into this camera of they're a small company like what if my camera breaks like am i gonna be able to get hold of them and all that but once i got to that facebook group i knew it was like this is way cooler than actually being in buying into a bigger brand just because it's more personal there's a little more humanization into it kind of it's almost like you're more face to face rather than on a call in a different country having to deal with people that don't even work for the company final thing uh the assist tools on the monitor when you're in certain frame rates and certain resolutions and codecs and you click record all of a sudden the monitor goes clean and you can't see your focus peaking or your waveforms or any of that so a lot of people say, oh, just use the, the your external monitors. I don't like focus peaking on external monitors. Uh, they're not accurate. They're really hard to see, especially when you're doing a run and gun, you're outside and there's heat blazing on you. You can't see shit. And so the internal focus peaking in camera is amazing, but I'm having to switch over to H.265 and mess with that just so I could keep those tools on there just to make my job easier. So that's like my number one beef, just that thing and the END. For those two complaints, that's pretty good. With that said, you have a lot of YouTubers saying, oh, the battery's hard to get out. Was that hard? Was that hard? Wait, was that in focus? Let's do it again for the focus. Let's do it again for the focus. Let's turn this out a little bit. Look, I can't even really see what I'm doing here. Oh my God. Oh my God. So this is what's kind of bad. You get these YouTubers that get these cameras. They don't actually use them. They're not actually out there doing uh, jobs and having to stress that if I pick up this gig, I'm not gonna get hired again. I'm not gonna be able to make money. They're just making YouTube videos. So they're not really pushing the cameras and really focusing on the things that matter. Having the battery being a little tiny bit fidgety, which it's not fidgety to me at all. It fits in there really snug. I like how snug it is in there. It's not an issue to me at all. Um, the ISO shifts, like why does that matter if it the color barely shifts like one or two percent? I I don't give a f about any of that. This camera works for me, so I don't think they they mean bad by the camera. I think if they got to use it more, they would like it more, and if it was for their type of work. But I think what they're doing is they're making YouTube videos, they're vlogging, they're just what I'm doing right now. I do this on the Sony. And no one's gonna give a f if this looks as good or not. You know, every camera has its quirk. If you're using a uh, hybrid camera, there's a bunch of little issues that you have to fidget with. And if the battery is the, the only quirk on this thing, this camera's gonna win it, you know? Yeah, I don't know. If you're actually working professional, uh, hopefully you got something good out of this. If you're someone that's trying to get into the industry more, Hopefully this information helped you. Just be careful on what you're watching and who you're listening to. Try to find trusted sources that are actually putting the cameras to use and actually doing cool shit with it, you know? Uh, if you guys have any questions, let me know. You guys know how I do. Uh, I'm very lackluster and boring and yeah. Peace. <laughs>